This is Dale Jr., and you're listening to Dirty Mo' Radio. Finally, I think it had been about 45 minutes, an hour, like, oh, gosh. crazy pregnant me came out, and this guy was like, you have to wait, and I was like, look here, mister. <laughs> Either I'm going to break down that door and go and cause a big scene, or you're going to bring me back there, like, and I'm crying with this, you know, my big... With your baby with belly. With my belly, and <sighs> finally, the guy was like, okay. Welcome to Kelly Earnhardt Miller's Fast Lane Family, presented by Wella Professionals. Salon care products that you can experience with your senses. Get high performance you can see, touch, and sense. Welcome to this week's episode of Fastlane Family. I wanted to take a few minutes and send my regards to the Steve Burns family. His wife Karen and his son Bryson, his mom and dad, uh, brothers and nephews and nieces. Steve was just a wonderful person in our industry. He was a family friend to the Earnhardts. I know he thought a lot of the Earnhardt family and the Earnhardt family thought a lot of him. So he will be sorely missed in so many ways. But what a great person, a great friend, a great father, a great Christian man, and a great colleague to all those folks in the industry. We'll miss you, Steve. We've been planning this episode for quite some time. We we actually uh, had our guest on schedule due to some unfortunate events that I know we're going to talk about today. Um, it got canceled, but we're so glad that it finally happened. Samantha Bush is in studio with me today. People aren't going to believe this, but I've never met Samantha. I so know. <laughs> this is a first for both of us. We're just going to sit here and get to know each other. Sounds great. I know. I'm so sorry we had to cancel that, but obviously well, it was... For very good reason. <laughs> Terrible circumstances, but, you know, we're on the mend. We're on the uphill of it, so we're yes, doing good. Yes, good. Well, we're going to talk about that, and later on in the show, uh, we will visit with our Willa professionals. They're going to get us ready for summer with tips for the perfect ponytail. I'm sure that uh, you know how to do a lot with ponytails, you and your blog that you got going on. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fitness, fashion, any sort of tips. I'm sure once the baby's born, it'll be lots of ponytails because we won't have time to shower, wash yeah. my hair, or anything. <laughs> and then you're going to add a parenting section. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I could give advice on that. I'm, I'm Googling everybody else's stuff right now. Okay. <laughs> we'll get into that. So, Samantha, you were um, raised very outside of the NASCAR uh, industry, outside of Chicago, um, in Indiana. Italian family. I couldn't have guessed that, right? <laughs> dark hair. Dark eyes. Accent. Yep. Dark eyes. Very Italian looking. So, how did you meet Kyle uh, amongst growing up in Indiana and uh, going to school at Purdue? Sure. So when I went to school at Purdue, um, I had a variety of jobs from aerobics instructor, waitress, and I was also a promotional model while I was at school. And so during the week, I did promos on campus, whether it was for bars or basketball games or whatever it might be, all different companies. Um, And then on the weekends, I would travel to either Chicago or Indianapolis to work different events. And it happened to be my first day at a racetrack. I was down uh, in Indy and I was working for actually Chevy, um, and my job was to check people's licenses. They were going for ride arounds uh, in the track, but not in race cars, just in normal cars. And Kyle at the time was with Chevy, and we crossed paths. He saw me working and had his PR girl come over (laughs) and say, Do you want to go for a ride? And so um, I went for a ride when I was done with my shift, and it was funny because we had the same t shirts on. And I said, oh, my gosh, you got a way better job than me because it was so nice and cool in the car. And um, I was outside. You know, (laughs) Indy, it's like 100 degrees, 100% humidity. And he kind of just gave me this funny look. And as most of you know, Kyle doesn't talk. He's kind of more quiet, and I never shut up. (laughs) So for the whole two minutes we were in this car, I rambled. And I asked him, you know, we were all going out to a party. And uh, lo and behold, I didn't know he was racing trucks that night. Right. No, I'm busy and so he finally told me what he did um, when we talked on the phone on Monday because he kept saying he was busy and I was busy um, because I worked all weekend and then I got all nervous. Super so nervous. you left there not knowing who he was, really. You just thought he was another worker, yeah, like you. He was You're just both, young, yeah. yeah. And he yeah. said he was busy, and I was like, "Oh, that's cool. Yeah. We're going here, and then I've got to work for this company this day." And You're wearing this and the that. same shirts, you know. Yeah. So I, no idea. Um, totally embarrassing. No idea. Uh, so then he told me what he did, and he was like, "Oh, you know, do you want to go out sometime?" And I was like, "No." I got all nervous. I was like, because then I, you know, I was like, oh, is like legit? Is he for real? And so then I looked and I got super nervous. And so we talked on the phone for four months before we went out. <laughs> wow. Once you I had got, to put him through the test, right? Once I got comfortable because um, then he came and saw me at Purdue and it was a lot of fun. And then we started long distance dating because um, I was going into my senior year. So we did long distance. So I would visit him at some of the races and then during the week he would come to campus. So, so you guys were, you were just kind of getting to know NASCAR and what that was about and you're still going to school and he's 
Yeah. I mean, he's kept driving, Xfinity driving all of this at this point. Yeah, he was super, yeah. yeah, he was really busy, but he still, he would try to come down every other week to campus, and it was fun, because he didn't get to go to college, so yeah. he kind of got to see a little bit, he would walk me in my classes and all that and stuff. And probably nobody knew who he was there, right? Yeah, so. he blended right on in, you know, just looked like yeah. another student. How um, fun is that? And then I graduated, and I moved out to North Carolina. And then the big proposal came. Yeah, and then, and then you guys got engaged. We got engaged. We got married uh, New Year's Eve, and yep. we're coming up on five years this New Year's Eve. Gracious, time flies, doesn't it? I know. When you were in college, you pretty much did you come to any of the NASCAR races then? And what did you think about NASCAR? When I didn't have a big test or something like that, I did come out to the track, and it was it was crazy. It was like nothing I'd ever experienced. You know, obviously then when we started dating, I'd watch them on TV and all that, but actually going there and hearing the cars and seeing the fans, it was so cool. And so then I really wanted to know more about it. And so it was great during the races, you know, when the pit crew wasn't busy, I'd be like, what's this? What's going on here? (laughs) And so, you know, then they, they taught me. And so now I, you know, you really appreciate everything that goes in, all the work that the guys do. And then obviously right when I moved down, Kyle started building KBM. And so kind of just seeing everything from the ground up right it really makes you appreciate Being a part the sport. of that yeah. yeah true and so then when you moved here um and you guys got married you still continued in school and got your master's yeah i definitely told him um because i applied to a bunch of different schools um i mean obviously we had been dating for a while but I, I, that was something important to me. I needed to get my master's. And so, Did you do that online? or Yeah, through Austin P. State University. Okay. Um, it was a you know real school, but they had a whole master's program online for um, industrial organizational psychology. And so um, the first two years that I was down here, I did that, and I got my master's. So. And so you traveled and balanced that and the work schedule and uh, uh School schedule, not work schedule. Yeah, there's, you were, I'm sure there were, there's some working in there too that we're going to talk about that you've been doing. So. Yeah, no, it's really funny. There's a picture somewhere I have to find. I was studying for a final during a race, and I had like all my the engineers had all their stuff out, and I had my little spot on the pit box, and you know I had my books out too, and I was kind of juggling both things, but it was really important. I really told them that was something that meant a lot to me. I'm really interested in psychology. I think everybody in the world needs therapy. Um, (laughs) I don't know what kind of psychology you studied, you know, what, what. I was uh, business psych, so I was the boring psychology, kind of leadership skills oh, and okay. person organization okay. fit. So that was kind of well, my area. Well, that suits you well now with KBM and, and managing people and all that. Because I was going to ask you, how do you use that now kind of in your life? And do you refer back? Because I think when I think of somebody with a psychology degree, I think they're reading you upside, you know, <laughs> like first glance, <laughs> reading you, <laughs> analyzing. <laughs> What's wrong with this person? <laughs> yeah, well, obviously Kyle handles all the stuff about uh, with the cars. I'm not going to even pretend to know anything I about that. that but um, I do a lot of our high and interviews for PR and that different type of stuff that we have at KBM with our, you know, our young drivers that come in. And so that's kind of where the master's degree has come yeah. into play. So I read online that you are very involved in kind of the social media strategies. And like you said, with the, with the new guys that come in, these young kids, and they're younger and younger every day. Yes. Uh, they need some training and, and somebody to show them in the way. So what kind of things do you do with them? Yeah, so we hire different PR people and then you work with them to kind of just build their brand. That's the huge thing right now. You know, each driver needs their own identity. Um, they have to stay true to themselves, but they kind of have to have their niche that the fans like. And so that's kind of what we work with. And then, you know, we hire the right people to give them media training and all that. I mean, I think Eric Jones is a great example. He gives awesome interviews. He came in as this very shy, quiet, young kid, you know, and he wins a race and I watched him on TV. I'm like, he's like a seasoned pro. <laughs> he, he does sound like it. <laughs> absolutely amazing. And then, you know, we get dreams like Parker and Bubba who love doing media. So it's creating content for them, creating the viral videos and all that. And, you know, just letting people see who they are. So do you, are do you check in with KBM daily, weekly? What's your kind of a typical day for you there? So I email back and forth with Amy and Ryan a lot. They're, um, two of the people that they handle a lot of the social stuff and a lot of our day-to-day lives. And so that's what I'm real big in. And then Amy is also huge with me on the foundation. And that's really my baby of gotcha. KBM is gotcha. our foundation. Gotcha. So just s- similar with me, just checking in by email, staying in tune. They let you know what's going on. You let them know which direction you want to go and 
that kind of thing. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. Amy and I have worked really hard this the last two years, especially to just take the foundation to a whole new level. So we're really proud with the gains that it's made. Yeah, we're going to talk about that too. So I wanted to spend a minute talking about your blog. If if my listeners don't know, you have samanthabush.com tons of information on there <laughs> i had came across i think i came across actually the um on, through twitter c- had come across a few articles and had been on there a few months ago and then as we were pre- preparing for this interview my goodness how do you do all that i mean <laughs> so i was always kind of i love to write and i was always writing stuff or people would ask stuff on twitter and i'd you know give them an answer and so i kind of just put it all together one yeah. day and it started with fitness and i'm as girly as they come so it, it had the fashion stuff and then it Really, um, when we started doing IVF to have our little man right here, um, that's when it kind of took a turn towards that and got a lot of exposure. Because I wanted people, it's very raw on there, it's very honest, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. And that's, I think, when it really took off was this year, um, letting people see, you know, completely into our lives. Yeah. It definitely has stepped up because I, I went back to, to look at some of the fashion stuff from, I don't know, you started it a couple of years ago. Yeah, with I think it's the, like on its third year, yeah, fourth year. Yeah, and just seeing the difference. And like you said, in in what you're telling and how you're telling it, you know, I, I looked back and in some of the beginnings where, you know, they're just kind of very bland, uh, not not bland, but well, like you said, without the emotion, you yep. know, they're, they're not, not in depth, you know. Not raw, right? You know, just giving your feeling and emotion out there. So, and I think it's in the beginning. You're a little nervous to put it all yeah, out there. Yeah, exactly, people. exactly. And then, kind of as you know, you get support from, especially the women yeah. followers. Then you're like, okay, I can, I yeah. can put it all out there. And then yeah. finally, when it came to the IVF blog, it was like, this here it all is. <laughs> <laughs> it's and no there hiding. it all, no hiding there. Nope. Um, yeah, I looked at something. I'm like, man, she is brave. Wow, <laughs> she is brave. And I can uh, sympathize in regards there, like with Amy, with Dale's girlfriend, and they've been dating a really long time and very shy in the beginning. And, and you know, Dale wanted to kind of hide her so that she didn't get crucified by everybody. But, you know, the more and more that you get out there and you put yourself out there and you trade tweets with people and all that kind of stuff and you have that support, it's a lot easier. Yeah, and you to, learn uh, <laughs> not everybody's going to love you. Not everybody's going to love what you're talking about, but that's fine because right. there is an audience there, especially you know, a very strong women following that want to know, you know, good fashion tips, the latest workout trends, you know, kind of see good recipes. And so as long as, you know, they're happy and I'm happy, then you kind of just learn that that's, that's all that's really important. So this is a question. I I have this question for myself because like I said, we, we don't know each other and haven't met, but what uh, stood out for you with Kyle Bush? Because you talked about, you know, people not liking this kind of, and, and Kyle had, you know, quite a reputation back in 2008 and, when you're falling in love with him, and gosh, I've seen such a transformation of him as a person and, and outwardly, you know, through through racing, uh, what I see as an outsider, just like the fans. So what was it about him that uh, made you fall in love? So that's a great question because, you know, a lot of people see what they want to read or right. see on TV. But it was really in those first four months before we actually went out. and So we saw each other in Indy, and it wasn't until much later that we actually went on, went on a, a date. date. But it was just getting to hear, talk to him on the phone and hear how he grew up and how determined he was and, you know, and just hear how he was with his little puppies, um, Kelly and Susie, (laughs) the two Westies, and just hear, you know, kind of his passions and how he would come, you know, then once we started dating, he would come to school and he'd walk me to campus and we'd go out to lunch and he was just so laid back and he kind of would always go out of his way, you know, whether I'd be at school and he would send flowers or he knew I'd have a big test. So that morning he'd send me a text like thinking of you, good luck, you're going to ace it, you know, like even though he was so busy racing all over the country yeah. and testing, he would still know, oh, she is a final or, oh, this is when her big papers do. And so he would always send little encouraging things or, you know, so I thought that was really Just sweet. always making time. Yeah. 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 Always making that extra effort. It's kind of like uh, watching The Voice and, and you don't get to see the people, you just get to listen to them. So you had four months of, you know, just listening and, yeah. and not a lot of interaction, personal interaction. Yeah. So, but um, it was kind of cool because then when we actually did go on a date, it you yeah. really weren't yeah. too nervous. Yeah, so exactly. Yeah, it you was knew good. a lot of background. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we knew about each other's families yeah. and all you that stuff. You don't know if he's going to chew with his mouth open or not, but you knew. That yeah. is actually my yeah, biggest right. pet peeve. That's hilarious. <laughs> and he did not. He did not. <laughs> That's one of my daughter's pet peeves, and she tells us, and t- not not that we chew with our mouth opens, but she can't stand the chewing sound. Me neither. 
so she can't sit too close to us at the dinner table. We were eating apples over the weekend at Bristol, and she's like, my gosh, we're all in the car. And, you know, it's Wyatt and her and me and my husband, and we're all eating apples. And uh, she's like, why do you have to chew that apple? I'm like, it's the apple. It's not us. I mean, that they is make me. loud noises. At <laughs> dinner, when we have like a big dinner with people, because it drives me crazy, I always put music on. Like, <laughs> it's That's one of my huge pet peeves. I'm going to give her some, well, well, maybe we'll start having music um, with our dinners. Yeah. So you, you hit on your blog talking about your pregnancy and baby Bush is five, five weeks-ish? Four. Four weeks Yeah, four weeks tomorrow to be 40 Counting weeks. down. Yeah, I don't even know how to, like, prepare for it. It's so funny. People are like, oh, you know, are you nervous? Are you that? I'm like, ah. You really don't know what to be. No. Right? <laughs> it doesn't seem like it's real yet. Like, I know he's in there. I feel him. The nursery's getting done. But to me, I'm like, until I actually hold yeah. him, it's it's not 100% real yeah. yet. So what have you been doing to prepare for that? You've been Whew, we... websiting, researching, reading books. You know, I started Friends. doing all that and I was reading all these books and it was funny. People like Katie Kenseth and Laura Boyer and stuff, they're like, girl, we travel. None of that applies, <laughs> you know, because I was reading baby wise and it was, they, you know, they should be in their cribs to sleep and they were like, you got to get an airplane and go to the track. That's not going to work. Right. Like last night at Bristol, you'd be hauling them home at midnight. Exactly. Right? <laughs> and that's what they said. They said, you know, you try to do their first feeding and their last feeding and everything else in between. Yeah. You got to go with your schedule. Go with so the flow. really just a lot of girls in racing have been my best go to. What do I get for this? How do I do this? What do I do with that? And so they've been really great at helping me out. Did you and Kyle register together, baby register? Yeah. So how was there some funny moments within that about hmm, what, what is this? What does this do? <laughs> I am telling you, we walked into Bye Bye Baby and we both just stood there and neither of us knew what to do. We didn't know where to start. It was a little overwhelming. And so he got a little frustrated because we didn't know what to do. So we just started clicking on like walking everything. around yeah <laughs> we're like well we might need that we might need that and now that time's passed and i've researched more i'm like okay that's stupid we're never going to use that yeah so, right you know and then there's things you're like oh, i should have registered for like six of those so <laughs> we did a lot of you know take backs exchanges trial and, and error yeah. stuff right a lot of people were like i looked at your registry you're probably gonna want gift cards because you're gonna learn <laughs> so i was like oh okay thank you <laughs> What's one of the coolest things that you've got that you think you'll get just great use out of with your lifestyle traveling on the road? Mm, that's a really good question. Um, we got this Nuna pack and play. It's this really cool thing and it like lifts up with like one hand and it folds up and it's like 10 pounds only. Oh gosh, that's so, great. Yeah, I think that's really good for, especially um, in the bus that we have now, we've got a little crib, but when he grows out of that or when you do the West Coast swing, yeah. I think that's going to be our great go-to. Travel in peace. Yeah. Yeah. So you talked about the rawness that you gave about your pregnancy and, and your IVF. That was Gosh, that was very emotional just for me reading it. And I've had three children, you know, uh, didn't have any issues getting pregnant. Uh, I even got pregnant with one ovary I had uh, uh, with my last two. So lots of different things there. But just watching him give you those shots and, and all of that, gosh, how did you make it okay for yourself to put that out there for folks? Well, it's kind of a long story. Um, <laughs> <laughs> obviously, you know, there comes a time when you're married and you're like, okay, we're ready. We're ready to start a family. And so it's so exciting, you know, and, and so every month you're like, okay, this is the month. When's it going to happen? Yeah. Right? And you know, the first, I would say five months went by and we weren't worried. It was still like, okay, you know, and then six, seven went by and like, okay, maybe we should get those little sticks that you pee on. And <laughs> they tell you if you're ovulating, cause clearly maybe something's not right. And so then it was like, okay, we did that. And then it just gets to the point where it's not fun anymore. And mm. he was always very calm about it and very supportive but for me I was I was awful to be with because as everybody knows there's a big NASCAR boom of babies and that's all I wanted was a baby you know and so it was really kind of a dark time because I was not a fun person to be around um because you know it was it was emotional it was why why is everybody why, else why getting pregnant working, right what is wrong and so then I had um kind of a string of health issues where finally the doctor was like yeah there might be there might be an issue. And so they started running all these tests and they found that I had PCOS and um, basically I didn't release any eggs. So we can't get pregnant without one of those. That's right. Um, important. Yeah. <laughs> so then they put me on all these fertility drugs, which I was just a hot mess for 
a few months and those didn't work and so finally we went to the reach clinic in charlotte and we started uh they sat us down they basically said iui is not going to work ivf's your only chance so we jumped into it and after they told us that it was like a weight off our shoulders because yeah. we were like we have an answer after over a year it was like oh, okay. Right. You know, and you didn't know if it was going to work, but at least Kyle and I are both those people. Like, if, if we were at least doing something and trying yeah. for something, at least and we you have had the plan of it. Yes. Yeah. It yeah. was, it wasn't as, you know, th- then, then we had a game plan, so it was good. So then putting it out there for your whole process, um, what, what uh, made you want to do that for other people? Well, at first, you know, it was a lot of why got us. Why can everybody else have kids? Why this? Why that? And we prayed about it constantly. You know, not only praying that it was going to be successful or for an answer, but just kind of, can you give us like a little, like, why are we going through this? You know, because it seems like it's so easy for everybody. And as we were praying about it and the more we talked about it, um, we just kind of had this peace. Like, okay, we're going through this. I think it's to help other people. Um, And so I said, you know what? I'm going to share it with other people. Um, Hopefully, they'll be at ease about the process. And then as we were going through it, we're like, you know, I think we need to start a fund for people at reach that are struggling to pay to go through IVF. And so after we did that and um, we felt like, okay, you know, God made us go through this. Maybe not for us. Maybe there's somebody out there that weren't, they weren't going to have their miracle baby unless we started this fund. And so once we had that piece, it was like, okay. Yeah. You know. No issue. No. As I sat through some of those awful shots, I was like, you know what? It's going to be good for somebody else. And really it has. I've gotten so many emails from people that said, hey, I was so scared and now I saw it and it brought me yeah. some peace or um, just different things like that. So it was really positive. Yeah. I encourage everybody to go read the four-part series on that. And I read a lot of the, the comments underneath and it has done exactly what you just described and helping other people and just yeah. giving them that faith that it's all going to be okay and you know it'll work itself out and you can do it basically yeah. the whole that you can do it because it's a very tough thing to go through emotionally that's what i thought you know yeah. um a lot of stuff i read on the internet was very doom and gloom and this is the worst pain and this is going to happen and you no know, it's not fun nobody yeah. wants to stick needles yeah. in their belly but at the end of the day it's like it wasn't it's doable right you know and kyle right. was so awesome throughout the whole thing that it just made it so much he didn't easier. seem to mind at all but no. bam <laughs> let's just give you a shot <laughs> he was so good actually true story we are in the clinic and i was so nervous and the nurse kind of has to teach you how to give shots and so she was teaching kyle and he lifts up his shirt and he takes a needle there was nothing in it medicine wise and he put it in his stomach and he was like like this and the nurse goes i've been a nurse for 25 years <laughs> They've never seen a husband do that. Oh, gosh. So, yeah, he was just sitting there, and he's like, well, if I'm going to do it, I should try it on myself first. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> wow. His, so. next, um, his, his next chance is going to be for when the baby goes in to get shots or, or anything like that. He'll be, you know, offering himself up first. Let me show you how this is done. Yeah, exactly. You know? Because they do get scared when all that happens. My nine-year-old has been having to do some blood work and different things, and she's petrified of the needles. And I'm like, okay, let mommy show you. Let them do it to mommy. And I'm like, can y'all do that? <laughs> can you do it to me first? <laughs> like, okay, whatever. I've been through enough yeah. shots. I'll offer up Kyle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So <laughs> you're a pro now. Arm. You're a pro. So how has pregnancy been? Has it been pretty easy pregnancy? Well, the first... Or do you know how to even judge that, right? Easy, tough? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I think it's been pretty easy. Um, the first trimester yeah. was terrible. I was so sick. Um, I actually went to in-field care in Kansas because um, for 48 hours I hadn't eaten. I couldn't... Oh. I would drink water and come right back up. Oh, gosh. And so finally I went to in-field care and it was funny. Um, I went under with... I had the flu, quote unquote, because <laughs> we weren't telling anybody yet. <laughs> And um, the doctor came in. I'll never forget. There was like some PR person, and I want to say there was a driver in there because it had been during qualifying or something. And they were like, "The baby's fine." And I was like, "What baby? Oh. Whose baby?" Um, <laughs> I have having a baby in here. I was like, "I, I have the flu." Um, and so then, in the next weekend, we announced it because uh, a couple of people in the motor room lot were like, "Kyle, is your wife pregnant?" And she's like, "Nope." Nope, she's got the flu. <laughs> but you know how it <laughs> yeah, is. Yeah, it will run rampant really quick. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So we so had to get that out there. <laughs> yeah, but second trimester was great. Third one, I mean, besides the fact that my little feet get swollen, um, you're I, doing good. I feel fine. You're finding fashion ways around that. Yeah, I feel <laughs> fine. But 
I, yeah, so I, I guess I'd say I haven't I've yeah. had an easy pregnancy. Some people, you know, love it. Some people hate it, being pregnant. There, and there's different aspects of it, you know, that you can love and hate. I guess. Yeah, I was gonna say I love when I feel them kick. I hate that yeah. I don't sleep at night because right. my back hurts so bad. Right. So you can't get into the right spot. Yeah, there's a little bit. It's more. all worth it in the end. You're gonna, you'll, you're gonna find out. How hands on has Kyle been throughout the pregnancy? Yeah, he's been really, really good. Um, he's, like I said, through the whole IVF thing, every step of the way he was there. And then, you know, right when we found out that we got pregnant, he was super excited and it was cute. He went and like bought little baby stuff and he picked out, you know, some clothes and some toys. And now that he's home, obviously because of the accident, he's been real hands on and helping to prepare stuff and, you know, give his opinion on the nursery and all that <laughs> stuff. So it's been good. If your life is anything like here at Junior Motorsports and with Dale's, we get stuff from fans all the time. So have you got some unique, really cool uh, gifts for the baby? Yeah, we have. Fans? A lot of fans know how to knit, which is something I would yeah. love to know how to do. Me too. But I, I'm not crafty. I don't have the patience to sit for it either. <laughs> I have no patience. I'm not crafty. So we've got a lot of really cool, like, hand-knit blankets and... Um, a lot of a lot of stuff like that, like cute little hats, and one lady made a hat that has KBM embroidered Aww. on it. So a lot of cute stuff. That's the fun stuff. We just gave Regan and Megan a fire suit for Rhett um, for when he comes to the racetrack. They they're not sure when they're going to bring him yet. They're they're talking about kind of parenting styles, and I, and I read somewhere, or I think I heard somewhere, um, maybe on Wendy Wendy Venturini's show, um, you guys are just going to come right out of the box, hit the track, and. And go for it. Yep. Um, as soon as the doctors release Kyle to come back, yeah. which they really haven't given us an exact date, yeah. we're there. And Regan and Megan, they're kind of, you know, we're not sure when we're going to bring him out yet. And they had a little little scare with, he got a real high fever when he was only a couple weeks old. So they had a little scare of that, you know. And But uh, she's not sure when he's coming in the fire suit. And I'm like, well, I hope it fits when you decide to bring him. <laughs> that is so cute. I think in the beginning we'll keep him um, in the motor home. Yeah. We have a... Yeah. You know, a husband and wife team that uh, drive for us. So, you know, she can stay with him during the races yeah. until he's, you know, got some vaccines and all yeah, that. Yeah. But, um, no, now with Kyle's accident, I'm nervous that, you know, a typical guy, it's going to be after practice, his foot's going to be swollen, he's going to be like, oh, it's fine, where I'd be like, let's elevate, let's ice, you know. <laughs> so, um, a lot of things kind of changed after that. Yeah. That. Rack. So, let's talk about the accident. Um, kind of where, um, I know you guys have, have, done the press conference and there's a lot out there um, on the the whole process of it. Where are you guys now and how's that whole process been together? Now it's really good. I mean, you know, he's up and walking with a boot on and a shoe on uh, the right leg. So now it's really good, but... So he can get around on his own and... Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, the, he, a little normalcy. It's a little more normal. Those first few weeks were, I mean, they were hell. I just... When he... He wrecked. It was just pure shock. You know, um, you go to infield care and they just tell you to go to the hospital. And you're like, well, what's going on? You get to the hospital and they wouldn't let me back there for like 45 minutes because, you know, they're cutting him out of his suit and he's got a bone out of his leg. And the whole time he's yelling, bring my wife back. And the whole time I'm like, I need to see him. And finally, I think it had been about 45 minutes an hour. And like, oh, gosh. Crazy pregnant me came out and this guy was like, you have to wait. And I was like, Look here, mister. <laughs> Either I'm going to break down that door and go and cause a big scene or you're going to bring me back there. Like, and I'm crying with this, you know, my big, with your baby with belly. My belly. And <sighs> finally the guy was like, oh, oh, okay. And so they finally brought me back and that was just such a relief because I didn't know the extent, you know, I didn't know what the yeah, injuries you, were at all. I yeah. hadn't seen the TV like everybody else had. Mm -hmm. So I had no idea. So then when we saw him, Daytona was probably the greatest hospital we've ever been to um the france family had is real big in that hospital and the staff was great and it was wonderful um as wonderful as it can be for yeah, having to right. be there <laughs> um but it was a hard week we were in the hospital two different hospitals in one week and just not you know he couldn't get out of bed he couldn't yeah and you're pregnant and you're not you don't have your things like. no <laughs> it was it, it's hard to talk about because it's it's almost like you look back at it and it was almost just like a bad, yeah. a bad dream just seeing him like that. Cause Kyle's so independent and he's so strong and he's my rock. Like I'm the emotional one. He's, he's the stable one. And, and to have to be the stable one in that situation. Um, and just to see him not be able to, you know, get up to walk to the bath. Like it, it was, 
that it has to be hard. It was really hard. And yeah. then, you know, when we got home, it was obviously our house wasn't made handicapped accessible. Right. Um, so thank God for great people at KBM who built us a ramp real quick and got us a whole, we called it the cow bush wing. Or they <laughs> moved our whole living room out and made it into like a hospital room. Oh gosh. But it was challenging. You know, <laughs> it's funny to t- like to take a shower, like something so simple like that. It was like a two hour project yeah. from, you know, getting to the chair and covering the cast and getting in there. And I mean, it was, I don't think unless I don't, I don't think people realize, you know, you just go in the shower, turn on, take a shower. It, yeah. It's something that definitely you, to, to feel the emotion and to really understand it, you have to go through the experience and you're bringing back some memories of when Dale got burned in the fire and, and my mom and I, she stayed with him for weeks and, and I would go down and help with things as simple as a bath. Yeah. And how difficult that was to do. And like you said, it was a three or four hour undertaking to get done. And it's, it's so emotional because, you know, the guys. They're well, they're guys. They're, they can do this. They're tough. They're yeah. They're strong. They're independent. <laughs> and for them to have, you know, I think that was Kyle's hardest thing. He's like, I'd, it's so hard for me to, like, have you do all this, regardless if you were pregnant or not. Yeah. And to me, it obviously didn't bother me at all. But yeah. to a guy, they don't ever yeah, want no, help, no. you know. Exactly. So it was. I don't want to show that weakness, even though they they literally can't do anything about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it was a trying time. But now we're definitely on the upswing. Um, Kyle has worked his butt off in physical therapy, and the doctors are just blown away by, you know, how much he can already do. So it's yeah. definitely positive. Not that you you wanted a break like this, but but how has the break been? You know, being able to be at home together and and that kind of thing for you guys. You know. Everybody asks, like, you know, when something that bad happens, we could have sat around and been miserable and moped, but what's it going to do? It's not going to fix his leg or his foot. So we did. We tried to make the best out of it. Um, You know, in the first beginning weeks, there were so many visitors that we were so busy. It was, (laughs) you know, you would wake up and there would be people there all day. Um, And now with his physical therapy and that, it's, you know, we've made the best out of it. We've obviously spent more time together getting ready for the baby. And we've, you know, kind of caught up on a few shows that we wouldn't have seen or, <laughs> you know, done things like that. But honestly, those first probably five weeks, they were insane. They yeah. were just as busy as being on the road. But now I think that he is more mobile. It's At first, he could watch the races and be like, okay, clearly I'm in two casts. I couldn't do this. But now that the more mobile nope. he gets, the more itch he has to be like, want to be behind the wheel well that was actually going to be my next question so you've got the baby due in a few weeks is there any timetable to go the track even before he's released to race that now that he can be a little bit more mobile he's been going to the late model races because um we have some late model cars that go race he's gone oh i can't even think they're they're drivable yeah um so he's gone to that and that's kind of his fun time you know gets to hang out with the guys and see all that and it's a little more low-key and easy yeah i do know that he would like to go to the tracks it's just trying to kind of figure out you know sad to say but what's easy accessible for him like what's a short walk right you know um it's not the driving i think because he that would get him it's walking down pit road or upstairs or things like that so he's kind of trying to map out which track would be easiest for him to maneuver around i would assume if he goes to the racetrack he just doesn't want to sit in a motorhome somewhere he wants to be you With know, the guys. A part of things, right, yeah. right. Exactly. Yeah, and so he's trying to figure out, like, okay, well. What he, makes sense. <laughs> like, Martinsville, he's like, oh, well, they only have that tunnel with the stairs. And, you know, he's with Bristol, too, it's really, it's mm-hmm. steep. steep. And he's like, I don't think I could get into there because it's so steep. And then we thought about, like, his motorized scooter. He's like, I don't know if it'll make it up that thing because you know how the banking is <laughs> yeah, so steep. So yeah. it's little things like that that you never think about yeah. that suddenly you're like, oh, Okay, that's an okay, obstacle. That's yep, not going to work. Gonna work. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was even when he first got home, we um, right off the living room, there's this bathroom. So, you know, he went in there. Well, he, there It's a powder room, so with the sink, he couldn't turn around. Yeah. So there's my dad <laughs> cutting off the water line. We're moving out of sink. Like, oh, there's gosh. so many things to think about. It was crazy. Do your parents live close by? Yeah, they live in Davidson. Great. And so we're gonna... s- super close to them. Yeah. Be super good help. Yeah. And do do um, Kyle's parents still live in Vegas? And I know they they I've seen them at the track and they travel from. Time they to live time. in Mooresville. So actually. they do live here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it was kind of fun. 
my dad's real handy, so he was, you know, helping get everything, and Kyle's dad is too, so they were building him, like, a ramp into the shower and taking off shower doors, and so <laughs> both of our dads were just modifying the entire house. Right on top of it, and yeah. your mom's a nurse, so that had to be a good help. Yes, that was amazing, <laughs> and actually, my parents were in Daytona when it happened, oh. which I thank God, because the doctors come at you with all these questions yeah. and papers, and you just turn to your mom and say, help. I know. I, here I am. You know, I'm going to be 29 this year. And I just went, Mom, Mom. Like, I didn't, I was so kind of panicked that yeah. they're asking me all this stuff and sign here, do this. And there's so many people that, thank gosh, they were there. Because it doesn't <laughs> matter how old you get. Like, you will always need your parents. <laughs> Are you prepared for the baby in that manner? You've been to the hospital tour and done all those things and... Oh, yeah. yeah. We've got... Read up on what to expect there. <laughs> yeah. Um, we actually did our hospital tour really early. We we were so excited. So Just knock it out. <laughs> yep. We And we have a midwife, which is really cool. Cool. Um, yeah. A little different. But yeah. We wanted to try it. Um, yeah. And she's been awesome. So are you, awesome. you going to do a hospital birth? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Yes, I need... Yeah. I need You're not going to get that crazy. No, I need drugs. <laughs> Yes, I did too. Yes. Just pray they work the whole time. That's what I've heard. I heard an epidural sometimes wears off, which I yeah. was like, excuse Mine me? Mine got pinched uh, with my last child, and so, yeah, it was unexplainable, but you forget about it very quickly, just That's like what just like what you've been through with these shots and everything. You forget yeah. about it very quickly, and what is on the other side is quite worth it, so... The last thing I want to talk about, I want to talk about fitness for a second. So you, ha, you've you stayed working out and whatnot throughout your pregnancy? Yeah, I've worked out the entire time except the first trimester. Um, that was a little difficult. First of all, when they implanted the embryo, even Take though I know it's insane, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to like jiggle him out somehow. Um, so I didn't do anything. <laughs> and then I went right into being just severely ill from, I mean, pretty yeah. much 24 hours a day. But as soon as that was done, I was right back into my routine. So I, I mean, you know, four days a week at least, and I'm still doing it. I worked out this morning. So, so I need advice to fit fitness in to 10 minutes of a day. What do you do? I really like plyometrics, like high intensity. If you've only doing 10 minutes, you know, burpees and um, squat jumps, all that, just get just it really in. really high intense. I, I like um High intensity interval training, H I I T. Um, so it's like 30 seconds on, 10 seconds off, you know, and you just go, 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 especially when you only have like a limited time. Yeah. That's what I used to do race mornings. Um, you know, when there wasn't that much time, I would just get up and do like 30 minutes of just keep your heart rate up. You get that 10 second quick recovery and then you go again. And those are kind of my workouts. Now I do a lot of, um, bar. Yep, I saw that. Do a lot yep. of bar. My mom's been looking into bar. She's got a friend going to the Pure Bar. Oh, nice. And, um, so she was kind of toying with that. She likes to work out, but she she needs somebody to keep her accountable and all those kind of things. So I love it. If I don't work out, I'm like off. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. It's like my me time. Have fun with that with the <laughs> baby, that me time. <laughs> I'm thinking maybe I could put him in little mama room because yeah. we've got a gym it's gonna be. It's, it's not going to be bad with just your first one. You know, I have three, 14, nine, and three-year-old. So the age difference is, you know, a process in itself and then working full-time. I feel really guilty when I'm not here. So just fitting it all in, you know, my day starts at 6 and I get to bed at 10.30 or 11 and somewhere in between my day just gets the best of me, you know. Oh, yeah. So. That's, I can't imagine. Our days are already busy when we yeah. don't have kids. I'm yeah. like, I don't. You, you'll learn to juggle it. You'll just give up other things. Like, yes. I've got, mm, I don't know, five weeks worth of The Voice to watch. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> There's a couple of things that I try to watch on TV um, other than Mickey Mouse. So um, <laughs> so let's talk about the uh, Kyle Bush Foundation. Kyle started the foundation in 2006. Um, you've gotten very heavily involved. You mentioned at the top of the show, um, just coming off prom, or we're in the midst of prom season, but you just did a big event with Joy Proms. You want to talk about that? Yeah. So when Kyle started the foundation, he had gone to a children's home and kind of, they weren't orphans. They have parents, but their parents are either in jail or rehab or whatnot. Um, and so he had a few children's homes and he supported them around Christmas or different things that they needed. Um, and then it kind of evolved, but it was hard for us to keep in touch with them because they would change, would change right? administrators yeah. and there wasn't a lot of communication. And so really over the past few years, I said, you know what? There's so many people in need right here in Charlotte. We can physically go to them and see them and, you know, work real closely with them. So that was the first thing we started doing was really just helping local charities. And um, it's really taken off. And it's funny. Um, 
from a lawyer standpoint because the lawyer's like, okay, what is your foundation? And I'm like, what? It, anybody that we want to help is pretty much <laughs> like if something sparks my interest, you know, that's I what help I do. Because right. they're like, well, you need to pick one. I'm like, I don't want to pick one. There's many people have needs or different groups. And so the lawyers love me because um, <laughs> they're like, oh, OK, that's not working. Cause it's, you know, it needs to either. This be, isn't going to fit within this template here. Yeah. They're it's like not that's, following the rules. It's not working. But I'm like, no, just say it's helping the greater Charlotte area. So um, one big thing that we do is prom project. And uh, it's actually taken off this year. We were just helping Girl Talk down in Charlotte. That was one organization where they put these girls through basically etiquette training, um, not etiquette training like you're thinking but what to do if you're propositioned at prom for sex drugs alcohol oh. um and so they have to pass this class and then they would get to pick a dress um and they were you know gently used dresses and so we asked the fans to donate gently used dresses and then we went out and bought brand new ones too and so that was how it started for the past two years well, this year, not only did we help them, and we had this special event at Macy's where the girls got to go and pick out whatever they wanted. Clinique did their makeup. We paid for it all. It was great. We helped Joy Prom, which was a special needs prom right here in Concord. And so we brought them a bunch of dresses, and it was fun. I went out and styled them. So they would come tell me their size and color, and I would send them with some dresses, and Aww. that was really awesome. So we do that, and then Iredell County reached out and said, hey, you know, we've got a good 100, 150 girls that – can't afford dresses because the average cost of prom now we read is like eight hundred and fifty four dollars for a girl it's insane Crazy. yeah between the dress the hair the makeup yeah. the flowers so as long as we can at least provide the dress and some accessories and all that it really helps them and you know we didn't want the girls to feel like they were getting you know a dress from the 80s or something yeah. that they'd yeah. be embarrassed in so these dresses are beautiful you know current and very glamorous and there's been a lot of girls at the track they have donated um selena harvick sent us a bunch of dresses and everything so it's been really good and um the girls get so excited you know so that's one big thing that we do in october we do our big project pink event um and so what that was is there is this group out here and they help local women completely pay for all of their medical bills and we found it really important to kind of know exactly what the money was going to. Um, I don't like to just hand out checks that say for research, quote unquote, and you don't know where it goes. So we actually read the bios of women right here in Mooresville, Charlotte, Concord. Um, we bring them out to the racetrack and we actually um, know exactly what the money pays for. So we have a big charity dinner down at Five Church for that. And then this year we're going to split it with um, our newest project again why the lawyers love me um (laughs) kyle and i personally donated twenty five thousand dollars to reach and now we're starting fundraising to help other couples be able to afford to go through the process that you've gone through yeah awesome so reach is going to do kind of the same thing they're obviously no names but it'll say kind of their story yeah um and then through there we'll be able to help choose some people and the the um accounting department will help us choose people that they know are really in need and really want to have yeah that's very cool very passion oriented and impactful because of your experiences and things that that you're passionate about and that you love yeah that's kind of how it is you know when they said define your foundation like it's just whatever yeah whatever we're passionate about um i borrowed my prom dress when i went to prom you know, because it is yeah. expensive. Yeah. I And uh, we have an employee for us that went through breast cancer um, and now obviously IVF. So, yeah. And and needs change in our community, you know. And right. So there's there's always varying needs to try not to box yourself in. Yeah. I and get the same thing on our end. <laughs> you know? it's What's it about? We help children. Okay. Well, that's an adult thing. Yeah, but they have kids. <laughs> you but, know, there's kids somewhere down yeah. the line here getting helped. If we're helping an adult... Who has kids, we're helping someone somewhere. <laughs> exactly. I was watching the news last year, and there was a women's shelter in Charlotte, and they were talking about how they didn't have any bedding. So next day, Kyle and I are, <laughs> you know, at the store buying all this bedding. And because it's great, the fans, you know, they um, they donate a lot to our foundation. Yeah. I mean, you guys know yeah. how awesome yeah. their support yeah. is. And because Well, I think when, they can, when the fans can see... I'm thinking the image of you guys during the breast cancer race and one of the races and you had the women at the track and you're handing over right then. And I can just picture that in my mind when they can see those things, the immediate impact. And like you said, specifically, we're helping this. 
Yeah. Um, and that's what's amazing. And I like that one-on-one connection. There was yeah. um, a breast cancer patient on the pit box with me, and she said, thank you so much. I've had these results at the doctor, and I couldn't go back because I couldn't afford the payment to <sighs> even see the doctor to get my results to know the next yeah. steps. Oh, my gosh. And so it's just hearing those stories and, and really, you know, staying in touch. There's, you know, some people you stay in touch with, whether it's through Facebook or email, and, and I think that's that's what yeah. I love about yeah. having a foundation. Yeah, that immediate connection. That's awesome. Well, lots of good things there, and I'm sure that you guys will continue to build on that. We, we continue to do the same thing every year and just add things yep. and, and grow and uh, the generosity of the fans that support NASCAR and, and all of our different foundations is awesome. All right. Well, I so appreciate you joining me and us getting to meet each other yes. finally with everything that's been going on um, with you and Kyle and wish him continued uh, speedy recovery and hope that he's back on the track soon. Maybe not before a little baby bush gets yeah. here. Maybe, <laughs> maybe he can just, you know, the baby can come and y'all can have a few weeks to... Yeah, that'd be good. To just to kind well of get used that. to yeah. what this is going to be yeah. like. But thanks yeah. for having me. And yep. obviously, I'm sorry that I had to cancel that uh, last time. You have nothing to be sorry about. <laughs> nothing to be sorry about. And best wishes with the baby. Thank and, you. Um, we will uh, talk soon, I'm sure. Yeah. All right, it's time now for our tip of the week brought to you by Wella Professionals. Ponytails. Summer's coming soon. Everybody wants their hair off their neck to be a little cooler. Who would ever think making a ponytail could be so difficult? Well, let me guide you through the steps of that perfect style. Here's the tools that we're going to need for this. We're going to need our vent brush, a hair band, and a few hair pins. Prior to beginning with your ponytail, place a bobby pin on the opposite sides of the hair band. This will act as your anchor and help prevent breakage as many hair bands can create too much friction when the hair is pulled through the band and tight. Never heard of that, and I've never tried it. Yeah, so you're actually going to take your hair band and then place the bobby pins onto it yeah. before it's even in your hair. Which makes sense. Yeah, yeah. it does make yeah. sense. Yeah. So while the hair is wet or damp, you prep your hair with a Wella Professional Velvet Amplifier Style Primer. We've discussed that velvet amplifier many times before to prime your hair for some other styling products. It's pretty handy and sure is a must purchase. The next step is that we're going to apply the Wella Professional's Flowing Form Smoothing Balm throughout the hair to reduce the frizz and increase flexibility. Proceed to brush all your hair back to the desired position of where you would like your ponytail to start. Continue by twirling the hairband around the ponytail and anchor the pins to each side. This will ensure that the hair stays in place and protects the integrity of the hair. I'm definitely going to have to try that with the girls. We, we're ponytailing all the time, but I didn't know about the body <laughs> thing, so this is great. Proceed by taking a small section of your hair in the ponytail and then circle it around the hairband to create a beautiful camouflage and hide your band. Finish this technique by using a pin and secure this hair section at the base of the ponytail. Lastly, applying Wella Professional's Smooth Brilliance around all the hair. This will smooth out the look and prevent flyaways. You can purchase these in any Wella Professional product at any of the 782 Ulta stores nationwide or purchase online at Ulta.com. All right, well, thank you for joining us for this week's Vaseline Family and hope you'll tune in next time. Fastlane Family has been brought to you by Wella Professional Hair Care, multi-sensorial hair care products that you will see, touch, and sense the difference from your very first wash. Hair care needs from fine to normal to color to coarse, Wella's got you covered. Wella Professional Hair Care products are available at over 780 Ulta stores nationwide. Visit Ulta.com to find the store nearest you. Thanks for listening to Dirty Mo' Radio. 